Chris, what is our third main topic today? Our third topic comes from Marcus Glenn. Hi, John. Probably the biggest announcement coming out of D23 this year was the lineup for Thunderbolts, but we haven't really heard much since. So today I read an interview with Julia Louise Dreyfus, and she was saying the movie will shoot this summer in June and that she's insisting on doing combat and fighting in the movie. What do you think about this? And are you excited for the movie? Thanks. All right. Thanks a lot for writing that in, Marcus. And look, I, I, I've said this before, but I will acknowledge it again. I had very little interest in the Thunderbolts movie. Very little interest. I thought it sounded like a second-rate Disney Plus show, to be honest. I did. I, I thought this is something they can just shuffle off to be some additional content, lower, but whatever. And then the biggest, nay, the only interesting thing that was, was announced at D23 was they came out with the cast. And when you look at that cast... And you know what, Taylor, bring up uh, bring up the, the main thumbnail of the show here today, because I, oh, sure. I want to take a look at that cast. When they announced the cast, and which was also essentially letting us know who the characters in the movie were going to be, we suspected Yelena, but the fact that Bucky was, and we suspected Walmart Captain America. And uh, I, I mean, Ghost, there were some rumors about Ghost. Good to see Ghost back. I loved the Ghost character yeah. in Ant-Man 2. But David Harbour. David Harbour and Bucky. Uh, what's David Har Harbour's name again? Uh, the Red... Red Guardian. Red Guardian. Red Guardian. Red, Guardian. Yeah. Red Guardian and Bucky being in that made me go, huh. And I've really grown to like Yelena because I, I didn't like the Hawkeye series all that much. Yelena was one of the, the oh, highlights yeah. in that series for me. And all of a sudden I came out at that D23 weekend going, oh, am I looking forward to Thunderbolts? Oh my God, I think I am. I think I'm excited about Thunderbolts. And that has remained to today. The only question has been like, is it really going to happen? Is it, When are they going to get rolling on this? Well, according to stories now, they are moving forward this June uh, with going ahead and they're going to go into production, which means, and I spoke to somebody about this yesterday, um, that the pre-production on this apparently has been insane. Like they're talking about the offices there are going 24 hours, almost in shifts, getting the pre-production all done wow. and working on this. They are heavily at work on Thunderbolts already, which, of course, would be for a movie of this scale. Let's bring up the, the site there. Oh, uh, the site. Well, we'll go to the quote first. Andy. We'll go to the quote now. Okay. This comes to us from the folks uh, over at Variety who wrote the following. The Contessa last appeared in the 2022 blockbuster Black Panther Wakanda Forever, where the audience learns that she has been named the director of the CIA. This sets the stage for her strongest outing to date, the upcoming film Thunderbolts, which Dreyfus told Variety Film will film this June. So just a few months from now, they start getting in front of the cameras. Uh, Julia Dreyfus is no longer content with cameos, she said. She wants to crack some skulls. I actually pitched it, Dreyfus said. I told them I really, really want to fight. We'll see if that happens. I haven't seen the script yet. When reminded about Marvel's intense stunt training, she reluctantly agreed, ugh, I guess I better get in shape. <laughs> Which is perfect. But listen, I want to see her fight. I want to see her be a... I want this character, like, because to me, she is the counterpoint to Nick Fury. And as the counterpoint to Nick Fury... I think she should be every bit the badass that Nick Fury actually is. She may not have any superpowers, but damn it, you don't want to cross her. Like, And I, I want to see that, so I really, really hope. And man, I'll tell you what else. With this movie already being in heavy pre-production, like working overtime, round the clock, getting ready for this June start date, this tells you something about how secretive Marvel has become over the years. Because we are months away from them getting in front of the cameras, and they have not shown the primary cast the scripts yet i mean that, that that tells us a lot anyway chris yeah lot lots to talk about here mm -hmm. we got julia talking about doing action stunts the stuff that, that goes in front of the cameras this june they start shooting this thing the fact that this cast hasn't even seen the scripts yet i don't know what's jumping out to you oh man i love that she wants to do her own stunts <laughs> julia really uh, Louis Dreyfus is one of my favorite, favorite performers. I love her so much. Her brief stint on SNL, obviously her work on Seinfeld and on Veep. For her to be doing this action move, I think is really, really fun. She's 62. So if she wants to like get in. No, she's not. Is yeah. she? Isn't that wild? She looks phenomenal. She's the same age as Tom Cruise. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Which, well, that's kind of my point I thought here she too. was like early. I had it in my head. She was like early 50s. She is. 
Forever young. And if Tom Cruise is doing this, I oh love that God, she's she like, great. let me step up to the plate. I can do this too. Get me the training. Let me do some of my own stunt work. I think that's rad. I'm really, really here for it. I think she's going to do a great job. And this character is so intriguing to me too. I think it's a really, really interesting move to have her being, like you were saying, that counterpoint to Fury and kind of delving more into the, the murkiness of these kinds of ops and being more willing to be murky about it. I think we all kind of forget that Nick Fury does a lot of shady shit. Oh, yes, he does. But we have him among heroes all the time. And I love that she is just, oh, no, no, no. I can use you and your blind rage, Kirkland, Captain America, and we can have a fun time taking care of business. I love this. By the way, that shot that Jonathan just had up, only interesting, only really interesting scene of the Black Widow movie. At least, at least I think easily the most interesting scene of the Black Widow movie. Uh, the, the movie had its had its moments. Um, anyway, Rob. Look, you know, one of my favorite genres of action cinema is the men or people on a mission movie. Whether it's Guns of, the 60s had a lot of these, like the Dirty Dozen, the Guns of Navarro and the Wild Bunch, Seven Samurai, whatever. Give me a bunch of disparate, misfit characters put together that have to accomplish a task and i will watch i love this genre and the fact that that's apparently what we're getting here again it's marvel dipping into other genres of film now you could say like you know the avengers are a team but they're good guys I, i'm sure these guys are gonna bicker you know <laughs> some of them don't like each other i love that dynamic and yet they have to pull together to accomplish that's why suicide squad was so did the first suicide squad was such a disappointment to me because it was such a mess and i'm i'm hoping that th these characters especially i mean i can't wait already you can already see the tension between bucky and and bargain basement captain america because they already <laughs> have tension between them they've got beef i can't wait to see this movie i think this movie's gonna kick ass i think it's gonna be fun as hell i i hope it's r-rated hardcore john wick type action where people are getting their heads shot off and i i think it's gonna be dope i can't wait now the one big question that still remains for me about about this movie is because i brought this up a lot and i again i am shocked how much i'm looking forward to this movie now but where does abomination come in because there's been a lot of whispers and talk that neil uh the blonsky is going to be a part of it emil i should say not neil um and is what kind of role will Harrison Ford play? And is he indeed going to become Red Hulk? Uh, again, because there was there was this thought early on that the Thunderbolts will be going up against Abomination, which that's adorable, but that's a very short fight uh, were that to happen. Uh, is he a part? Does, does Abomination become a part of the Thunderbolts? D does Red Hulk and Abomination fight? Are they even in the movie at all? I mean, these are some questions I have going around in my yeah, mind. Yeah, I agree. But it has been reported that that if he's that Thunderbolt Ross or that the president, because he's the president now, apparently, is the villain. So wouldn't it be interesting if they need abomination to I take hope, out the president? I hope not, because the way they've always portrayed Thunderbolt Ross has been he's an asshole, but he's a good guy. Yep. Like he's an asshole, but he wants people to be safe. He wants security. He wants like he like he so he's been an asshole, but he's not been a villain in the MCU up until this point. So I don't know. That there makes could be me a little nervous. Going on shenanigans. Who knows? Right. But maybe they need somebody that can combat Red Hulk. Yeah. All right, guys. Question is for you. What do you think about this? And what stood out to you most about this? The fact that we got uh, the thing is already heavy in period production. The thing that we've got our start date for its shooting. The fact that we're talking about the Contessa having some combat scenes. The fact that the cast doesn't have the script yet i don't know whatever you guys are thinking jump down into the comment section below and let us know your thoughts guys we want to thank a sponsor of this video mint mobile if saving more and spending less is one of your top goals for 2023 why are you still paying insane amounts of money every month for your phone bill switching to mint mobile is the easiest way to save money this year as the first company to sell premium wireless service online only mint mobile lets you order from home and save a ton with phone plans starting at just 15 dollars a month guys i have told you before that when i was on one of the major phone carriers i was spending literally three times as much every month and 
switching to Mint Mobile couldn't have been easier. So for people just looking to save some extra money this year, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just 15 bucks a month. All plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. You can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and switch easily in just minutes with eSIM. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash campia. That's mintmobile.com slash campia. Cut your wireless bill to just 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash campia.